In this video, we'll see how to compute a bootstrap confidence interval for a mean and for parameters in a linear regression model. Bootstrapping is a resampling procedure that can be used to estimate the sampling distribution of almost any statistics, such as the mean, median, and regression coefficients. A bootstrap sample is a sample from the data with replacement. In comparison to the classical confidence intervals based on equations, a bootstrap confidence interval does not assume any specific distribution. Instead, it assumes that the distribution seen in a sample is a good representation of the population distribution from which the sample was taken from. Bootstrap confidence intervals can therefore be used as an alternative if we fail to fulfill assumptions behind the classical confidence intervals or if there is no equation to compute the intervals. Suppose that we would have the following birth weights of 10 babies in kilos. To compute the classical 95% confidence interval that assumes that the sample means follow a normal distribution, we can use the following formula that we discussed in the video about t-tests versus confidence intervals. If you plug in the values and do the math, we will get the following 95% confidence interval. We are therefore 95% sure that the true population mean birth weight lies between 2.914 and 3.486. Let's place this interval up here as a reference. We will now calculate the corresponding 95% confidence interval based on bootstrapping. Since we have 10 values, we will take a bootstrap sample of 10. Suppose that we randomly select this value, which we place down here. We then replace the empty space with the same value, which means that we sample with replacement. Next, we randomly happen to select the weight of the first baby. And then we happen to select the weight of the second baby again. We continue like this. Until we have drawn 10 numbers from the original data. Note that we drew 10 values because our sample size was 10. Due to chance, we happen to select the weight of the second baby three times. The weights of these babies were due to chance never selected in our bootstrap sample. Since we sample with replacement, some numbers will never be selected, whereas some numbers will be selected more than once. Next, we calculate the mean of our bootstrap sample and save it up here. Then we generate a new bootstrap sample and calculate its mean and save it up here. We continue like this. For example, 1000 times. We will then have 1000 mean values. We then sort these values and find the boundary where we have 2.5% of the smallest and largest values in each tail. 95% of the mean values will therefore be between these two boundaries. These boundaries will therefore define our 95% bootstrap confidence interval. Note that this interval is quite close to our previous classical confidence interval. If we would create a histogram of the 1000 mean values and place cutoff lines so that we cover 95% of the values in the middle, these cutoff lines will correspond to the limits of our 95% bootstrap confidence interval. Note that we have here calculated the bootstrap interval based on the 2.5 percentile and the 97.5 percentile. We here use the percentiles to compute the confidence interval. However, there are other methods. For example, if the sampling distribution follows a normal distribution, one can instead compute the interval based on the standard error. Since bootstrap intervals involve a random component, you will get slightly different intervals every time you compute them. The more bootstrap samples we take, the less variation we will have between the confidence intervals. Generally, we should take at least 1000 bootstrap samples, but the more the better.
we will now see if bootstrap confidence intervals actually work. To check this, we can do a computer simulation. Suppose that we have a population of newborn babies. The mean population birth weight is 3 kilos, whereas the standard deviation is 0.5. If you take a random sample of 10 babies from this population, and compute the 95% bootstrap confidence interval based on, for example, 1000 bootstraps of this sample. We see that the interval includes the true population mean. Then we take a new sample and compute a second bootstrap confidence interval, which also happened to include the true population mean. If we take a new sample and calculate a third bootstrap confidence interval, Due to chance, this interval does actually not include the true population mean. If we would repeat this process 100,000 times, so that we have 100,000 bootstrap confidence intervals, then we would expect that 95% of these intervals include the true population mean. However, it turns out that only 90% of the intervals actually include the true population mean for this example. If you increase the sample size to 50 or more, then approximately 95% of the intervals will include the true population mean. This means that we need a sample size of at least 50 to compute a reliable 95% bootstrap confidence interval for this example. We will now try to understand why bootstrap confidence intervals are not appropriate when the sample size is too small. Suppose that we would take a sample of only 5 individuals from the population and calculate the mean weight of these 5 babies. Let's put the mean value up here. Then we take a new sample and calculate its mean and save it up here. And then we repeat the same thing again and so forth. If we would repeat this process 100,000 times, we will have 100,000 sample means. And if you create a histogram of these sample means, we'll see that they follow a normal distribution with a mean that is approximately equal to 3 and with a standard deviation of about 0 0.22. Now, suppose that we would take a single sample of 5 individuals from the population, but where we instead take 100,000 bootstraps from this sample of 5 individuals and calculate the mean in each of these 100,000 bootstrap samples. If you create a histogram of the 100,000 means, we see that it looks a bit strange. This is because a sample of only five numbers will result in quite few unique mean values. It is actually only possible to generate 50 different mean values for the five data points in this example. This explains why the histogram is not smooth and why it lacks values in certain intervals. It is, for example, impossible to get the mean value of 2.82, because our sample does not include enough values to compute a large variety of mean values from the bootstrap samples. The distribution of the means based on the bootstrap samples is in this case therefore not a good representation of the distribution of the means computed from the 100,000 samples from the population. Now, let's repeat the whole thing again, but with a sample size of 100. Increasing the sample size to 100 will result in that the sample means are now much closer to the population mean value, which explains why the histogram is now a bit narrower. The standard deviation of the sample means has been reduced from 0 0.22 to 0 0.05 simply because we now use a larger sample size. Suppose that we would take a single sample of 100 individuals from the population and compute the means from 100,000 bootstraps of this sample. If we now make a histogram of these 100,000 means, we see that the distribution is now smooth which is simply due to the fact that thousands of different mean values can be obtained when we bootstrap from a sample of 100 values. Note that the distribution of the mean values based on the 100,000 samples from the population 
looks very similar to the distribution of the mean values of the 100,000 bootstraps from the single sample. This explains why bootstrapping works better when the sample size is large. Before you compute your bootstrap confidence interval, I recommend that you first study the distribution of the means of your bootstrap samples. The sample size of 10 that is used in this video is therefore too small for computing a reliable confidence interval. The reason why I used a small sample in this video was to simplify the illustrations. We will now calculate a 95% bootstrap confidence interval based on the difference in mean weight between two groups. Suppose that we in this case have data on birth weights of 10 boys and 10 girls. To compute a 95% bootstrap confidence interval of the mean difference between the two groups, we can take a bootstrap from each group and calculate the means of these two bootstrap samples. Then we calculate the difference between these two means. If we would repeat this process for example 1000 times, then we will have 1000 values that represent the differences in the means between the two groups based on the 1000 bootstrap samples from each group. If we identify the boundaries that cover 2.5% of the values in each tail, then we can define our 95% bootstrap confidence interval. Similarly, we can compute a bootstrap confidence interval for parameters in a linear regression model. Suppose that we have fitted the following regression line to the weights and heights of 9 newborn babies. The estimated intercept is negative 2.26, whereas the estimated slope is 0.108. As an example, we will here create a 95% bootstrap confidence interval for the slope of this regression model. If you take a bootstrap sample, these data points were, due to chance, not included in the bootstrap sample. This data point happened to be selected four times, whereas this data point was selected three times. Fitting a line to this bootstrap sample generates a slope of 0 0.085. We then take a new bootstrap sample and fit a new line to this sample. The estimated slope of this regression line is 0 0.118. Then we do the same thing again when the slope is now estimated to 0 0.104. Suppose that we will repeat this process 1000 times and that we create a histogram of the 1000 slopes. If we now find the cutoff lines so that we have 95% of the values in the middle, we can compute the 95% bootstrap confidence interval for the slope. Similarly, we can compute the 95% confidence interval for the intercept, like this. This was the end of this video about bootstrap confidence intervals. Thanks for watching.